Welcome to The Hill's Coronavirus Report. I'm Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Each day we are interviewing consequential leaders in the battle against the coronavirus. Recent reports have emerged that President Trump received intelligence briefings centered around the novel coronavirus as early as January 3rd of this year. While the administration claims it was late January when intelligence about the threat of the virus came to the fore, the flow of credible information has had its share of hiccups, to say the least, in the last three months. A key figure during the administration's daily briefings and a member of the president's coronavirus task force is Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. He's offered insight into the virus itself and how to combat it. So when a House subcommittee sought out Dr. Fauci's testimony, the administration initially said it was, quote, counterproductive for Fauci to testify this week. The White House press secretary went on to call the request a political stunt. Dr. Fauci is scheduled to testify, though, before the Senate's Health Committee next week. And in-person information gathering hearings in the House will still proceed this week on Wednesday as planned. From the great state of Connecticut, Congresswoman Rosa DeLora joins me now to talk about the goal of this week's testimony, the status of PPP, and her concerns about America's food supply chain coming apart. Welcome, Representative DeLauro. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And happy that everyone there is safe and we're safe here as well. Well, that's so. great. Uh, well, let me just ask you about the tug of war over Anthony Fauci. What, what happened? Well, look, let me just say this. I am very excited that we are going to hold a hearing uh, this week uh, in the House. You know, the Labor HHS subcommittee of appropriations is at the center of the debate on the coronavirus. We fund the National Institutes of Health, the Center for Disease Control, the Strategic National Stockpile, hospitals, all that is within our bailiwick, and we have provided billions of dollars over the last several weeks to develop the vaccines, the therapeutics, the diagnostics to address the scourge. Now, this, and by the way, this will be the very first official hearing held by the House of Representatives, uh, and it will be bipartisan. My, co my uh, colleague, uh, Representative Tom Cole, will be there and several other uh, uh, members. Uh, we uh, uh, we asked and we have great witnesses. We have Dr. Tom Frieden, former director of the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. We have Dr. Caitlin Rivers, who co-authored the Road, Roadmap to Recovery with Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Now, yes, we invited Dr. Fauci. And I will just say is Dr. Fauci is a very close friend, uh, in addition uh, to being a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a colleague in this area. And what you should know about this is that, you know, I've served on this committee for 25 years on the Labor, Health and Human Services uh, a, a subcommittee. Now, the um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Dr. Fauci has appeared before the subcommittee hundreds of uh, 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 dozens and dozens of times under whether or not there's been a Democratic chair or a Republican chair. And he has appeared in the Congress you know, over a, uh, hundreds of times under right. Democratic presidents and Republican presidents. Why? Because Dr. Anthony Fauci is one of the world's leading scientists. And if you're going to look for answers, and Americans deserve answers, information about how we got here and where we're going, science has, and facts have got to drive our policy. So we invited him to come and, you know, the administration in very typical fashion, quite honestly, uh, has put politics over the public well, health. Explain that because I also know Dr. Fauci very well. I think I've interviewed him 12 or 13 times. And I know that he is as appreciated in Republican circles as he is in Democratic circles. Yes. And is Tom Cole, I mean, is your, your partner in this committee, I assume, is he offended by the block? I, listen, you, you, talk, you, you yeah. should talk to Tom, yeah. but Tom is, he's coming. He's coming from Oklahoma. Right. You know, because the House rules say in order to have an official hearing, you have to be present. So not all of our members can get back. We will a ask their questions on their behalf. But we will have a bipartisan hearing with several members uh, of, of the House, including Tom Cole. So right. and does and he has great respect. And, and we all have the greatest respect for Dr. Fauci because of his knowledge. And you know that it really is quite extraordinary that the work that he has done on the AIDS uh, virus, we are at a point when we look to eradicating uh, AIDS. He has, we have provided the resources to do what he needs to do on a developing an influenza 
uh, a vaccine so that we because we do lose a lot of lives with influenza. So you've got one of the you've got the one of the world's greatest experts who has come before the committee, who knows the information, who answers questions every single day of his life. What is the administration afraid of? We're not afraid of <laughs> getting the information, right. but the American people need to know the truth, and that's what we're going after. Well, let me ask you just in, in, in short form, Congresswoman, you do fund the NIH, the CDC, and there has been interest in why certain functions of the CDC in particular were, were reduced and shut down and uh, uh, important parts of the international portfolio of the CDC were rolled back. Is that something that has concerned your committee about CDC and the early warnings and early action that we should have seen uh, with regard to the coronavirus? You know, I, I think that what we have here is, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the president, the administration have failed to provide the leadership that the American people deserve. And they failed to do this from the very outset. I think the things that you are talking about are critical. We need those answers to the questions. And I will, I will be doing that kind of oversight. I wanna take a look at what happened to the $16 billion that we gave to the strategic national stockpile. You know, we can't get it. We can't get answers from the administration. I do want to ask the questions of CDC uh, uh, and, you, you know, where's the money for the hospitals going? But at the moment, to be very honest with you, we need answers right now of where we are in this process. And that's what this hearing will be focused on. How do we best tackle where we are now? How do we save lives, having lost 68,000 or more lives? Uh, and how do we prevent that further loss of life? That's what we're gonna to try to get out uh, at, this, uh, uh, at this hearing in all of its manifestations with two expert witnesses and, mm. uh, and we will, uh, we will continue to have these efforts and we'll continue to ask Dr. Fauci to be a part of that. I just think mm. what I've said is that the, what the White House did and quite frankly, what they have done throughout this in, in, uh, 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 entire uh, uh, process, instead of providing the leadership that the American public needs, they have wanted to play a political game and there's no room to put politics above the public health today. People are dying and we need to have that roadmap for mm. recovery and get people uh, uh, and their families uh, in good health uh, and to be able to get back on track again. That's the way the Congress has got to move forward. Right. That's what my intent to do is to get the Congress moving forward on Wednesday. Thank you for that. The other, I wanna shift the track just a little bit. Another concern that you've had, and you, you issued an action plan on Friday, uh, along with the chair of the Agriculture Committee in the House, Jose Andres, Tom Bilsack, Dan Glickman, former agriculture secretaries both, that looked at the supply chain of food breaking down in America, the glut. I mean, not only is there a glut of corporate office space and a glut of airplanes, there is a glut of unused food out there. And I think you have concerns that there are ways to direct that agriculture production that is wasting and dying and directing it to people in need. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did on Friday? Yes, no, I'm very happy to do that because this started as a looking at, because the, the United States has an abundance of food. We're not like some other countries. And what I was finding with my own constituents and around the country, that we were watching people who didn't have the access to food stamps or to the food banks. Uh, and we tried to do work in that area. And I was trying to figure out uh, how we increase the uh, uh, the maximum benefit for food stamps, the minimum benefit, how to get people to be able to purchase online. Uh, so the problem was not the supply, that juncture, the problem was the distribution and to deal with the, logis the logistics of getting the food distributed. I had many conversations with restaurateurs, including uh, Chef Jose Andres. Then we began to see that because the restaurants are not open and the usual mm. uh, ways of getting the product out, we're watching farmers plow under crops. We are watching milk dumping, which then put into difficulty the issue of supply. 
So I sat down and I talked to all the, these folks to try to put a framework together of how we could move forward with making sure that there was an adequate distribution of food. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to make sure that farmers, that ranchers, that the small operations that are producing food can be able to get that food uh, and distribute it to where it's needed to get that milk not dumped, but to get it uh, to families and to get it to the emergency food banks, et cetera. Uh, and then now we have the added piece of how do we keep our workers safe, right. both people in the meat packing plants, the poultry plants. So from there, and with those pieces have put together, and I'm so proud of the work that was done and the cooperation uh, that we had uh, from all of these pieces about putting together a framework to safeguard the nation's food supply throughout the pandemic's public health emergency. Uh, and we will continue to talk about it. Well, thank you for that. And for my final question, just real quick, you know, we've all been watching uh, Speaker Pelosi in this time, you know, carve out coronavirus relief packages. And my right. my uh, uh, team at the Hill wondered, you know, she's intimated that maybe after this election she will move on. My, our, our question to you is, are you going to advise her to stay on? I, you know, we have the strongest speaker that we have ever seen in the United States. It's strong in terms of a spine of steel and handling these issues, but strong from a core sense of values and what the right thing is to do and a moral obligation to make sure that we take this on. So the speaker has my overwhelming support in the direction that she is taking us. And you want her to stay on. And I want her to stay on. Thank you very much, Rosa DeLora. Thank you for your leadership and for what you're doing uh, to contribute to uh, improving this horrible situation uh, for real people. Thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you thank all for joining us. I'm Steve Clemens. We'll see you tomorrow. Be well.